कल्याण गुणी कधमे नवदुनाथ प्रतिम प्रभा नारायणाखिल कारणा श्री प्राणनाथाय नमस्कोमी अनाकुल गोकुल मुललाथ यमनालात्मा तस्म नमो नीरद नील भाते कृष्णाय कृष्णारमण प्रिया अभीलोक्या बहिर्लसती अमोहरती मुहुरा नो विशदा जयंती मध्वस्यती दीननाथ दीप्ति मध्वस्यती दीननाथ दीप्ति मध्वस्यती दीननाथ दीप्ति वेदास आर द कॉर्नरस्टोन ऑफ हिंदू फिलॉसफी believed to be eternal and not composed by anyone and thus without any beginning they are universally accepted as the only valid source for god knowledge brahma sutras were composed by badarayana vyasa an incarnation of god himself for the correct interpretation of the vedic philosophy three famous acharyas have composed bhashyas or commentaries on the sutras giving diverse views about the nature of the supreme being souls and the inanimate world around us acharya madhva the last of them was born in 1238 ad in pajaka kshetra near udupi in karnataka he lived amongst men visible to others up to a ripe age of 79 years and established a complete philosophical system with its own etymology ontology and religious practices which are in tune with the most ancient vedic system he disappeared from udupi in ad 1317 and is believed to be in badri the abode of sri veda vyasa a biography called sri madhva vijaya containing the main highlights of his life and achievements was written by a young contemporary narayana panditacharya we are presenting some of the facets of the extraordinary personality of madhva in this presentation Hundreds of devotees had gathered in front of the temple. Suddenly, a lean and poorly clad person is climbing the pillar carrying the festoons. He dances with total abandon, with both arms raised, as if possessed by a spirit. Hey, let us hear what he says. Hey, listen to me, all of you. A great saint will be born very shortly. Yes, a great redeemer who will lead us into the path of salvation. Let us now go to Madhya Geha Bhatta's house where the baby for whom the parents have waited anxiously for more than 12 years of penance and austerity and destined to be the future Madhva has been born and is being given its name by the parents. Bhatta, you have to give the name of the baby. Let it be Vasudeva. Vasudeva, the tender baby, is still breastfed by the mother, who has been called out of Madhya Geha Bhatta's house for some urgent work with their relatives. Only young Kalyani, the child's sister, is available at home. Do not cry, my sweet brother. 
Amma will be back shortly and will feed you. Oh, what can I do to make him smile again? My heart begs to see him cry like this. I don't know when Amma is coming back. Now don't cry my lovely child. Here is something for you to eat. What a wretch I am. I have neglected to feed the tender baby so long. May God forgive me. My darling baby, how hungry you might be. Kalyani, you fool! What have you done? Don't you understand that a young baby cannot be fed horse gram? You have fed him that in a quantity meant for the cow. Oh, what will happen now? Look, though my son's belly is still full, he is smiling in his sleep. I think he will be all right. One day, Vasudeva, a boy slightly older than a year, stops playing outside and enters the house as he was hungry. Amma, I am hungry. Give me my food. Vasu, meals are ready. Call your father also. Appa, come in. Let's take food. I am feeling very hungry. I will come later, Vasu. Go and have your food. No, Appa. We will have food together. No, my dear. Do you see that man standing there? Yes, the man who sold you the oxen. Yes, he says he won't allow me to go unless I settle his dues right now. Is that all? I will settle your dues. Allow my father to have his food. You are going to settle my dues? <laughs> Take this and release my father. I am sorry that for this trifle, I made you fast till now. Please go. Is your account settled, sir? Of course, my sweet child. Madhya Geha couple is busy in a marriage in Niviyu. Two-year-old Vasudeva leaves the hall unnoticed and goes to Shankar Narayana temple in Kodavu. Then on to temples in Bananje and Udupi. While on his way to Udupi, passers by notice the very attractive child going all alone. Where are you going, dear child? Who are you? Where are your parents? He is so young and sweet, he should not be without an escort. <laughs> Come with us. We will leave you at your house. Vasudeva goes visiting one temple after another, accompanied by the invisible forms of the Supreme Lord worshipped therein, and finally reaches and prostrates in front of Lord Ananteshwara. Anxious Madhyageha comes in search of the sun. Passers-by show the way the lad has gone. He sees his son in front of Ananteshwara temple. Vasu, do you know how much we were worried? Were you not afraid to go all alone? I was not afraid, Appa, as I was not alone. Then with whom did you come here? All alone, God was with me and brought me here. This boy is God's own gift to us. May Lord Ananteshwara take care of him. Bhatta is teaching the writing of the alphabets on the sand as per the tradition to Vasudeva. Now write the alphabet one by one as you did yesterday. Why do you repeat yesterday's lessons? Please go ahead to the next. My God! My child grasps things immediately with only one lesson. Let not evil eyes fall on him. While the students were intently listening to their teacher, Vasudeva is playing abstractedly with his ball. 
The teacher is angry at his inattentiveness to the class. Ambara Ganga Chumbita Pada Pada Tala Vidalita Guru Tara Shakata Hey Vasudeva, if you are so inattentive to the lessons, why do you come to the school? Pardon me teacher, this lesson was a repetition of the same mantra, totally. Do not talk and act like Brahaspati. If you are so good, recite the next mantra. Vashta Aramagrajam Gopampur Oyava Anamahuve Indorindra Vrajaharippavamana Prajapati Vanaspatim Pavamana Madhvasamang Dhidaraya My mind is totally detached from the affairs of the world and is always drawn towards God. I cannot tolerate the Supreme God being insulted in front of me. If I do not take the oath of an ascetic, I will have to destroy evil forces in this Kali Yuga, which will not be as God desires. Hence, I will renounce everything and become a monk. Vasudeva, now a boy of about eight years, silently making plans for renunciation. His father watches him anxiously. Vasu, why are you prostrating in front of all these things? Appa, God is present everywhere. Did he not appear out of a pillar as Narsimha? Yes, but? I see God's forms everywhere and in everything. Vasudeva comes to Ananteshwara temple, prostrates and moves on, reaching the hermitage of Sri Achyuta Pragna. He enters the hall where the sage is sitting and prostrates before him. May God bless you, my boy. Who are you? I am Vasudeva, son of Madhyageha Bhatta of Pajaka Kshetra. I want to renounce the world, hence I have come to you. Please, sir, why are you silent? Give me the inspiration of an ascetic and take me as your disciple. Vasu, what is this? Are you thinking of renunciation and becoming a recluse? Appa, it is God's desire. Have faith in the Almighty. He who takes care of the entire universe will take care of you too. Please don't be so heartless and leave us. We prostrate before you. Look, you have just given me permission to renounce the world. How? You have bowed before me, your son. Appa, don't you know that an elder should not bow before an angster unless he is an ascetic? Please do not try to oppose the will of Lord Shri Hari. In the village Matha, Bhatta visits his son again, hoping to dissuade him from becoming an ascetic. I will commit suicide if you take up wearing a loin cloth to take sannyasa. I have done it. Now commit the improper act if you can. From this moment onwards, the whole world is my home. I am dedicating myself to the worship of the Lord and saving the good people of the world. 
you must not come in the way for such good actions. Vasudeva is sitting in front of Achyuta Pragya. The latter is initiating the boy as an ascetic, giving him the very appropriate name Purna Pragna, the all-knowing one. It is God's will that you have come to us. Here afterwards, you will be known as Purna Pragna. Blessed am I. Achyuta Pragna is giving a discourse in Bhagavata to a few of his students along with Purna Pragna. Amuni Bhagavadrupe Mayate Hyanubarnite Ubhe Api Nagrinhanti Maya Srishter Vipaschitaha. The reading here is Maya Srishte Avipaschitaha. Yes, this is the correct version. Acceptable to Veda Vyasa himself. How can you say it so confidently? I know the entire Bhagavata composed by Veda Vyasa. In that case, recite the Panchamaskandha. Let the senior hermit look at the book to check it. Atisu Kumara Karacharano Rasthala Vipula Bahuam Sagala ಪ್ರಕೃತಿಸುಂದರಸ್ಮಿತವದನಮಹೋತ್ಸವೇನ ಪುರವನಿತಾ ಮನಸಿ ಕುಸುಮ ಶರಮು ಪದಧಾನ ಪರಾಗಮಲಂಬಮಾನ ಕುಟಿಲ ಜಟಿಲ ಕಪಿಶ ಕೇಶ ಭೂರಿ ಭಾರೋ ವಧೂತ ಮಲಿನ ನಿಜ ಶರೀರೇಣ ಗ್ರಹ ಗೃಹೀತ ಇವಾದೃಶ್ಯತ ಪೂರ್ಣ ಪ್ರಜ್ಞಾ ಹೌ ಕಿನ್ ಯು ನೋ ಸೋ ಮಚ್ ಇನ್ ಸಚ್ ಎ ಶಾರ್ಟ್ ಟೈಮ್ This is not due to study in this life, but is the result of my studies in earlier lives. Purna Pragna sitting in front of Achyuta Pragna for being anointed as his successor to the lineage. Now you are the heir to Vedanta Samrajya, the seat of all spiritual wisdom. You will be named as Ananda Tirtha on this occasion. Achyuta Pragna is sitting with Purna Pragna, a senior hermit and a few students. On the opposite side were seated another ascetic and his disciples having a friendly debate. I want to show that the soul and creator are different entities in essence as the soul is subservient to God. If you say that the soul and the almighty are two different entities you will also have to account for the difference between the difference itself and the soul if you go on finding the difference between the two entities successively where is the end i will now argue that just as a roop may appear as a snake when not properly seen similarly this world is not real and is an illusion when a potter makes a pot the pot is not an illusion similarly The creator too has created this universe. It must be real and cannot be dismissed as an illusion. Sage Purna Prajna, your capacity for logical argument is unsurpassed. We call you in future as Anumana Tirtha as the most befitting name. Achyuta Prajna and Purna Prajna are discussing Shankara's Brahma Sutra Bhashya. A senior hermit and a few students are listening. When the Brahma Sutras are studied independently with an open mind along with other valid Pramanas, it gives a different meaning. But this Bhashya seems to be saying something entirely opposite. I see that you have some doubt on the Bhashya. Go ahead. But 
when you go through the bhashya or the explanatory commentaries the meanings attributed to the texts are entirely different the two cannot be reconciled it is improper to question the authority of the bhashyakara like this please think about what i am saying with an open mind if you think that you are such a great scholar and know more than the great shankara himself why don't you write a new bhashya on the brahma sutras instead of sniping at the ancient one all right sir i will obey your instructions leaving the shankara bhashya now tell us about the correct interpretation of sutras and upanishads in a clear manner and dispel our doubts please we want to know too hundreds of devotees and scholars have assembled to hear purna pragna give a discourse on aitareya upanishad in a temple near payaswini river there are many in the audience who want to challenge the new teacher omnipresent narayana is immanent in the food we intake and takes a new form and is enshrined in our body when the food is assimilated in the blood it is incorrect this mantra in aitreya describes the creation of soul i do not disagree with what you say then how could the same text have different meanings there are three different meanings to the vedas mahabharata has tenfold meanings and there are 100 meanings to each name of the lord in vishnu sahasranama tell us the 100 meanings of vishnu sahasranama i will do so but you should note and repeat all the 100 meanings when i finish we will do so please go on vishanti asmin ananta kalyana gunaha an abode of infinite superlative qualities vishati ti vishwam the one that has entered all the entities in the world is vishwam vina garudena shwayate iti vishwam v stands for garuda the celestial falcon he who has garuda as his chariot is vishwam purna pragna continued without hesitation faltering or pause for thought till his audience found themselves unable to retain in full the encyclopedic and scholarly discourse which flowed past them like a river in spate in a large gathering at ananta shayana temple tiruvananthapura purna pragna is explaining his conclusions of the purport of brahma sutras several eminent scholars were listening God is full of infinite and eternal auspicious qualities. The souls have many defects, very limited in their capacities, and always dependent on God for their very existence. Therefore, the soul can never be identical with God. We should get his grace by constant devotion. He will redeem us with his divine grace. This is the siddhanta of Veda Vyasa. in the brahma sutras sacrilege you are uttering blasphemous ideas no you have to break away from tradition if reason demands only true devotion to the almighty will lead us to salvation veda vyasa has established this in his brahma sutras too you are going against the accepted tradition of advaita vedanta which is the only correct meaning of the shastras if you have real courage and conviction write your own commentary on the brahma sutras sir don't get angry if you disagree let us discuss your objections properly there is no royal proclamation banning new thoughts or writing new commentaries yes yes what what gunapatnya says is correct We want to hear and understand his ideas, sir. Please go ahead. Achyuta Pragna was sitting with Purna Pragna, a senior hermit, and a few students in their matha at Udupi. Now that I have completed my pilgrimage to the south, I would like to go to the north. 
I am anxious to visit Badri and pay my obeisances to Lord Narayana there. I will miss your company very much. But duty should come first. Please go and fly the flag of truth and virtue all over the country. May the great Narayana who resides in Badri Kshetra protect you always. It is a cold night in Badrinath. Purna Pragna is engrossed in reading Bhagavad Gita Bhashya composed by him in front of Lord Narayana in the temple at Badrinath. Devam Narayanam Natva Sarova Dosha Vivarjitam Paripurnam गीतार्थम वक्ष्यामि शक्ति वाई डू यू से शक्ति यू हैव द कैपेसिटी टू टीच फुल्ली बट अदर्स आर इनकेपेबल ऑफ ग्रेस्पिंग इट हेन्स जस्ट से लेशित instead of shakti taha oh lord it will be as you desire devam narayanam natva sarva dosha vivarjitam paripurnam gurumscha गीतार्थम वक्ष्यामि लेट द गीता रेंडरिंग ही कंटिन्यू हैज यू डिजायर माय लॉर्ड आई एम गोइंग टू द हेमिटेज ऑफ श्री वेद व्यास I do not know when or whether I'll return. Please follow my teachings and advice and act accordingly for your best welfare. Satya Tirtha treks the whole day in the Himalayan slopes trying to follow Purna Pragna seen dimly at a distance. When it is nearing dark he is still as far from him as ever and sees Purna Pragna jumping fast from one hill top to the other Purna Pragna waves at him to return Satya Tirtha bows and finds himself instantly back at Anantamata with the others Veda Vyasa is sitting along with many sages in his hermitage Purna Pragna enters and prostrates Veda Vyasa and Madhva are going towards Narayana Ashrama. When they reach the hermitage, Lord Narayana receives them. Madhva prostrates before Vyasa and Narayana, which are both different forms of the supreme being. My dear child. You should write your commentaries on the scriptures and Brahma Sutras and make the good people of the world know the truth which has been obscured by others that is the main purpose of your incarnation the matchless bliss that i get in seeing and serving you every day is my heart's desire in the present kali age there are no good people on earth interested in knowledge and redemption no there are few good people with faith even now though they are helpless with their minds and intellect covered by agnana and mithya agnana you should gather them together like precious beads from a broken necklace and lead them to the right path this is my desire i will carry out your order Acharya Madhva is back at Badrinath from Narayana Ashrama. 
the disciples are overjoyed at the return of their master the news of his return spreads like wild fire several local brahmanas such as agni sharma offer bhiksha all the offers are accepted on the same day and the acharya partakes all the food offered madhva composes his matchless brahma sutra bhashya there and dictates it to his favorite disciple satyatirtha narayanam gunai sarvai udirnam dosha varjitam yeyam gamyam gurum chapi natva During his return trip, Acharya Madhva on the banks of Godavari gives a discourse to an assembly of scholars in a temple. Shobhana Bhatta, an eminent scholar in the Vedas and Nyaya Shastra, is prominent among the audience. Ikshater na shabdam God is the ocean of auspicious qualities each letter of the scriptures recites one of his names every word is an epithet of god but the vedas declare that god is nirguna void of all qualities how can the vedas describe him if he has no attributes at all i understand they continued their discussion till shobhana bhatta was fully convinced about tattvavada being taught by purna pragna acharya madhva is back in udupi and is discussing his new preachings with his teacher achyuta pragna a senior hermit and other disciples were in attendance the purport of the brahma sutras cannot be the identity of the soul with its essence of dependence very limited capacity and bondage along with the supreme being with infinite auspicious qualities please try to follow the correct interpretations given by me without prejudice but the ancient bhashya of acharya shankara says differently i am not still clear how such a great person could be wrong all that is traditional need not be correct you have yourself agreed that the pramana is given by me prove that the siddhanta acceptable to veda vyasa is as concluded by me in my bhashya any other interpretation will be inconsistent and against the correct purport of the vedas if you have any doubts let us discuss them further madhva is coming from the sea shore at malpe carrying the famous krishna idol to madhva sarovara for washing vande vandhyam sada anandam vasudevam niranjanam indira patim aadyadi varadeshavara pradam After washing, when it is touched by the Acharya, it becomes too heavy to lift even by thirty disciples. But the idol is easily lifted by Madhva. to install it on the pedestal and perform chintyami shitu ho swarna manjira samvitam arudham jagadam baya vande Shri 
ತನುತ್ವೇಪಿ ಅಖಿಲ ವಲಿತ್ರಯಾಂಕಿತ ನಿತ್ಯ ಉಪಗೂಢಂ ಶ್ರೇಕಯ ವಂದೇ ಶಂಖಚಕ್ರ ಗದಾ ಪದ್ಮಧರಾಶ್ಚಿಂತ ಹರೇರ್ಭುಜ ಪೀನವೃತ್ತ ಜಗದ್ರಕ್ಷ ಕೇವಲೋದ್ಯೋಗಿನೋನಿಶಂ ವಂದೇ Acharya Madhva also initiates eight other ascetics for worship of Lord Krishna who have founded the traditions of the eight mathas of Udupi Among them the redoubtable Vishnu Tirtha brother of Purna Pragna known for his extreme austerity and great learning who is the only one to whom Acharya Madhva revealed the secret meanings of omkara is believed to be still alive and doing penance in kumaradri hills others are shri rishikesh tirtha narahari tirtha janardana tirtha upendra tirtha vamana tirtha rama tirtha and adokshaja tirtha the first to be initiated is rishikesh tirtha The system of eight ascetics performing the ritual pujas by turn has continued to this day. The period of change of the matha performing the puja by rotation was increased to two years at the time of the famous saint Vadi Raja. The period of change is called Paryaya and is a grand function lasting several days. ವಂದಿತೇಷವಂದ್ಯೋರುವೃಂದಾರಕ ಚಂದನ ಚರ್ಚಿತೋದಾರ ಪೀನಾಂ ಸಕ ಇಂದಿರಾ ಚಂಚಲ ಪಾಂಗನೀರಾಜಿ ಮಂದರೋದ್ಧಾರಿ ವೃತ್ತೋದ್ಭುಜ ಭೋಗಿನ ಪೀಣಯ ವಾಸುದೇವ ದೇವತಾ ಮಂಡಲಾಖಂಡಮಂಡನ ಸೃಷ್ಟಿ ಸಂಹಾರ ಲೀಲಾ ವಿಲಾಸ ಪುಷ್ಟಾಢುಣ್ಯ ಸದ್ವಿಗ್ರಹೋಲ್ಲಾಸಿನ ದುಷ್ಟ ನಿಶೇಷ ಸಂಹಾರ ಕರ್ಮೋದ್ಯತ ಪೃಷ್ಟಪುಷ್ಟಾತಿಶಿಷ್ಟ ಪ್ರಜಾ ಸಂಶ್ರಯ ಪ್ರೀಣಯ ವಾಸುದೇವ ದೇವತಾ ಮಂಡಲಾಖಂಡಮಂಡನ ಪ್ರೀಣಯ Acharya Madhva guides a Vedic sacrifice performed by Vasudeva who is the son of Acharya Madhva's Veda teacher. Madhva's younger brother is the priest chanting the rigs. 
The king and a large assembly of learned men are present. Arguments offered by an opponent hereditary priest, Maraditthaya, against the sacrifice on the grounds of incompetence of Vasudeva are rejected by Madha with the concurrence of the assembly. These Ritviks are not qualified to perform this sacrifice. We have already discussed this issue at great length in front of these distinguished people. The sacrifice will go on with the main object of pleasing the Supreme Being. Madhva introduces the practice of using a symbolic animal made of flour for the sacrifice instead of a live animal. Sri Madhvacharya is travelling in King Ishwara Deva's territory with his disciples. They are stopped by the king's servants and taken to the king, who orders them to join in the digging of a big pond under construction. It was the king's practice to compel wayfarers to contribute free labor for such works. Look here! All of you must join in doing this work. You can only go when it is completed. We are ascetics and not trained in such works. Please show us how. The king starts digging to show them, but finds himself unable to stop, as Madhva, Mukya Prana, is himself the inner controller of all living creatures. It is not surprising that the king finds himself totally helpless in stopping his demonstration and making the group start digging. Madhva smiles and goes on his way. Acharya Madhva's party comes to the southern bank of the Ganga. All the boatmen have fled due to fear of invasion from a Muslim king and camped on the northern shore. Unperturbed, Madhva asks his disciples to form a chain headed by him and leads them through the turbulent river. The Muslim soldiers on the other bank see the party crossing the river without boats so easily and shout to each other while wading into the water. Stop them and kill them. Fools, do not jump into the river in haste. How can a small party like ours do any harm to you? We want to meet your king. Why do you want to create a quarrel unnecessarily? Oh, fair hermit. I have stopped all the boats. How did you cross the huge river without boats? I have kept thousands of hardened cruel gods to stop enemy spies. How did you escape from them? What do you want to do here? We perform all our actions with the blessings of the great God who is illuminating the entire world through the sun. We are going to the north as soon as possible. I am very much impressed by your courage, capacity, scholarship and holiness. I would like you to stay with me. I will make all arrangements and gift you half my kingdom if you accept. The offer gives you credit, but we have renounced the world completely and cannot stay in any one place for long. Moreover, we have to go urgently to our main destination. Madhva's party goes on with the king's soldier forming a guard of honor and with bearers being sent ahead by the king to make all facilities available to them. Acharya Madhva has reached the Vyasa Hermitage for the second time. Veda Vyasa and Acharya Madhva are sitting under a tree. Acharya Madhva presents his compositions Brahma Sutra Bhashya and Upanishad and Gita Bhashyas to the Supreme Being. I am giving you these stone Vyasa Mushtis for worship. You have fully covered the Vedas, Upanishads and Gita. You should also write a definitive work on Mahabharata to correct distortions that have crept in since I composed it. 
it is a great authoritative work which is essential for understanding the true purport of the vedanta the incorrect readings which have been included by the ignorant should be corrected though i have participated in the epic itself as bhima sena i would still like to seek your guidance to fully understand many points which you have written in guhya bhasha with your blessings i will compose mahabharata tatparya nirnaya on my return on his return acharya madhva meets a king on the banks of the gomati river the king is a pashanda who does not believe in the supreme being extolled by the vedas acharya madhva is angry at the slur cast on the infallible vedas by one who is himself unable to study them there are many texts in the vedas which when recited do not give the result stated <laughs> thus all the vedas are invalid there has to be competence in both performing the actions prescribed by the vedas and in getting the results if you have not seen the correct results you do not have that competence this argument is incorrect i do not find any such competent person like the unreal horn on the ass i will show you do not talk lightly about subjects on which you have no competence satyam satyam hoy satyam hoy satyam hoa in ambutirtha near kalasa karnataka seasonal floods in the river were to be controlled by placing a huge stone boulder in the flood path a large group of nearly 1000 persons try in vain and gave it up as impossible acharya madhva comes to the spot the only way to check the flood water is to put that boulder in the stream yes but all of us together are unable to move the stone any further perhaps bhima could do this none else madhva smiled went to the boulder he lifted it gently with one hand like a feather and placed it at the right spot see is it satisfactory now acharya madhva and party have gone to a village called pashupe he is giving a discourse to a large audience of devotees about vedanta it is not only that the infinite vedas extol narayana when interpreted correctly every word letter and sound syllable of the vedas extols vishnu as its main purpose all other types of knowledge produced pertaining to the day to day world is of lesser importance to the supreme purpose all natural sounds such as the roar of the seas rolling of thunder humming of bees also do the same one should only know how to interpret and understand these music when understood in the context of extolling the divine also fulfills the single noble purpose then respect it sir one should be able to achieve the worldly results stated in the vedas through music also as they have a common purpose yes one can do so Madhva accepted the strange request with a smile and decided to display his prowess as a musician and his great devotion to the supreme being who controls the entire world. ಮಂದಿರ 
ಗೋವಿಂದ ಒಂದೇ ಸುಂದರಿ ಮಂದಿರ ಗೋವಿಂದ ಒಂದೇ ಆನಂದ ತೀರ್ಥ ಪರಾನಂದ ವರದ ಆನಂದ ತೀರ್ಥ ಪರಾನಂದ ವರದ ಚಂದ್ರಕ ಮಂದಿರ ನಂದ ಕವಂದೆ ಚಂದ್ರಕ ಮಂದಿರ ನಂದ ಕವಂದೆ ಆನಂದ ತೀರ್ಥ ಪರಾನಂದ ವರದ ಆನಂದ ತೀರ್ಥ ಪರಾನಂದ ವರದ ಚಂದ್ರ ಸುರೇಂದ್ರ ಸುವಂದಿತ ಒಂದೇ ಚಂದ್ರ ಸುರೇಂದ್ರ ಸುವಂದಿತ ಒಂದೇ ಆನಂದ ತೀರ್ಥ ಪರಾನಂದ ವರದ ಆನಂದ ತೀರ್ಥ ಪರಾನಂದ ವರದ ಆನಂದ ತೀರ್ಥ ಪರಾನಂದ ವರದ ಆನಂದ ತೀರ್ಥ ಪರಾನಂದ ವರದ ಆನಂದ ತೀರ್ಥ They are so immersed in it that they are virtually unconscious of the outside world as in deep sleep. After some time, when Madhva stops, they see the flower and fruit that they had asked him to produce. They fall at the feet of the divine musician who sees the supreme being everywhere and in everything. Acharya Madhva is believed to be the originator of classical music of Karnataka. The tradition of making devotional musical compositions being followed by one of his immediate disciples Narahari Tirtha the art of yakshagana founded by him survives to this day in Karnataka and Kerala after his puja acharya madhva gets up and sits on a high pedestal covered with a woolen cloth and starts his discourse he goes on for an hour explaining the greatness of mahabharata as a pramana composition composed by veda vyasa to explain in a practical manner with illustrations the philosophy of vedanta itself narayanaya paripurna gunarnavaya ವಿಶ್ವೋದಯ ಸ್ಥಿತಿಲಯೋನ್ನಿಯತಿ ಪ್ರದಾಯ ಜ್ಞಾನ ಪ್ರದಾಯ ವಿಬುಧಾಸುರ ಸೌಖ್ಯ ದುಃಖ ಸತ್ಕಾರಣಾಯ ವಿತತಾಯ ನಮೋ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ನಮೋ ನಮಸ್ತೆ I will commence discussing my new composition Mahabharata Tatparya Nirnaya today Guruji when i went to my house this morning after bath i found that our library with its entire collection of several hundred books is missing this is the mischief of padma tirtha and company do not worry the library will be returned to us now let us continue with the pravachana On the invitation of the king of Kabe Nadu Jayasimha Acharya Madhva comes to the Vishnu Mangala temple There is a very large crowd of people The raja with his ministers comes on foot to the place where the great guru has come Acharya did you have a safe and comfortable journey Please bless me and all my people with your august presence With the grace of Hari We are all well. Let us go into the temple. Sir, sir, we have found the library stolen by Padma Tirtha. With your kind permission, could the books be taken over again? Let Shankara Pandita take them over again. We think that the thieves have learned their lesson. Let them not be punished or imprisoned. As my master desires. During Acharya Madhva's stay in Vishnu Mangala the famous debate between the learned Advaita scholar Pandita Trivikrama father of the author of Shri Madhva Vijaya 
and Acharya Madhva takes place. The king is present and it is well attended by scholars of all schools who feel that the last and final challenge to Madhva is being made by Advaita. Narayanu Nantaguno Brahmakyo Veda Veditaha Vishwakarte Ti Vishwajnaha Shrutya Yuktya Pyasi Shadhat After seven to eight days of Vada Katha, Trivikrama Pandita has no more questions or doubts. He does not also have any answers to Madhva's questions on the Advaita doctrine which he had strongly espoused earlier. He falls at Madhva's feet. Please forgive my presumption in trying to debate against you. Please accept me as your humble disciple and lead me to emancipation. In Kantavara, Madhva calls the two strongest wrestlers in the party and asks them to press his throat and silence him reciting a scriptural text. The assembled crowd and his disciples look with wonder and respect at the Vedic Rishi in their midst. Now I want both of you to use all your strength and squeeze my neck. I will be reciting Vedic hymns. The sound should be stopped. I think we should not do this. You may not be able to breathe. Try your hardest. They try their hardest, but the sound of hymns emanating from the throat of Acharya Madhva continues. They sweat with the strain and are fanned at Madhva's command. No, sir. We cannot do it. Please forgive us. Acharya Madhva has fulfilled his mission in life. He is extremely fit and active, performing his daily routine meticulously. He has decided to spend the rest of his time of his incarnation as Madhva in the ashrama of Veda Vyasa at Badrinath. Acharya Madhva is sitting in the Anantasana temple in his usual place and giving a discourse about his favorite Aitareya Upanishad. Pradurbabhu Bhagavan Tapasa Itarayaha Narayanaha Abjaja Sutasya Vishalanamnaha. His discourse continues. Then from the sky fell divine flowers on his head with many wonderful colors and smells not known in the earth. The disciples watch with wonder but are not too surprised as they always knew that their master's discourses are listened to with great attention by the gods also. Namaste Pranisha Pranata Vibhavaya Vadimaga Namaswamin Rama Priyatama Hanuman Guru Guna Namastu Bhyam Bhima Prabalatama Krishneshta Bhagavan Namashriman Madhva Pradisha Sudrushanno Jaya Jaya Prathamo Hanuman Nama Dvitiyo Bhima Yevacha Purna Prajnastritiyastu भगवत कार्य साधक है ब्रह्मांता गुरवसाक्षात इष्टम दैवम श्रीअपति ही आचार्या है श्रीमदाचार्या है संतु जन्मनि जन्मनि आचार्य मध्वा इन हिस 79th ईयर एडी 1317 ऑन माघ शुद्ध नवमी वेंट अलोन टू बदरी the abode of Badarayana, his beloved Guru. Pingalabde Magashuddha Navamyam Badarim Yayao. Ananda Mukunda Aravinda Nayana. Ananda Mukunda Aravinda Nayana. Ananda Tirtha Parananda Varada. Ananda And 
Gracias.